hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to one of the past HSC exam question videos. We're going to do in this video, we're going to cover this exam question, which comes from the Evidence for Evolution chapter. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you pause the video, attempt the question, and then when you're ready, press play and like, go over the actual answer itself. So the question says, both the Australian bilby and the North American placental jackrabbit are found in hot, dry environments. How would the Darwin's Wallace's theory of evolution account for similarities in their ear sizes? And that's worth three marks. This is the bilby here, and this is the jackrabbit. So when you're ready, pause the video and then attempt the question. Welcome back. As for this question, what you first what you should have done is you should have talked about it says how would Darwin's theory of evolution account for the similarities in their ear sizes. You just have to give the basic facts of what how we can use Darwin's Wallace's theory of evolution to talk to talk about the similarities in ear sizes. And then there obviously there were two major ones. There was convergent and divergent. And you should mention that we're talking about convergent in this one. So convergent, and I mentioned what convergent actually was, which is that you have two different unrelated species which have similar characteristics because they live in similar environments. So you should have written about the environments they live in and how their characteristics help them to survive in their dry environments. You should also mention that the actual species are quite unrelated because the one is a marsupial mammal and the other one is a placental mammal. So even though they have these similar ear sizes, they wouldn't actually be related closely. So they talk about the environments and how their actual adaptions, so how the big ears help them to survive in their environments. Talk about convergent evolution and the fact that these are unrelated species. So all that should be in your answer somewhere. And I'll go over the answer itself that I wrote. What I wrote is the placental jack, uh, was it, the jackrabbit is a placental mammal and the bilby is a marsupial mammal which suggests that they are not closely related. So because they're actually different types of classes, they're not that closely related. Their characteristics is most likely not linked to their shared ancestry. So they have these big ears, not because they're closely related, but for a different reason. They're similar environments they live in. So it's due to their similar environments, not to their shared ancestry. Obviously this is to do with convergent evolution. Only members of a species that are best adapted to their environment have the best chance of survival and passing on the characteristics of the next generation. This was talking about the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin and Wallace. So this is the theory of evolution. So here we just mentioned it. And that's useful because we're going to talk about that more now. As both the jackrabbit and the bilby have to survive similar environments, so they have to have these similar environments that they live in, it's possible that both have similar features as the big ears increase the chance of survival of both species. This is called, should be actually, not convert, divergent, but this is convergent. Con means coming together, and divergent means going apart. And this is an example, not of divergent evolution, but convergent evolution, because here, even though they're actually unrelated, their characteristics are coming together, they're looking more and more alike, simply because they have shared environments they have to survive in. So what I wrote here is they talked about their environments, these dry environments, and that their actual adaptation helps them survive those similar environments. And that this is an example that both have similar ear structures of convergent evolution, because in order to survive they have to have look quite similar or have similar adaptions, because they're all benefit, beneficial to their survival. And then the last thing I wrote is the large surface area of big ears increases blood flow to the skin surface, increasing heat loss, which is essential in order to survive in a hot and dry environment. So this last part here might not have been required. It just I just included it just in case. But here I give a detailed description of the actual adaptation. But what you should have definitely mentioned is that the adaptation helps with heat loss and uh, that you can lose more heat and that's an, a beneficial adaptation. That's what we should have mentioned. You wouldn't have had to describe it most likely, 
but definitely mention that it's a adaptation that helps when it comes to heat loss and to survive in those hot and dry environments. So you get one mark for mentioning that you know they're not related and their actual survival, the fact that they have these big ears is not related to their shared ancestry, but they're similar environments live in. That gets your mark. You also get a mark for quickly mentioning the theory of evolution and then being able to link that to convergent evolution. And then you also get a mark for just saying that you know, these big ears really help when it comes to heat loss and they need to do a heat loss because they live in a hot environment. They also get two mark. So that would be your three marks out of three. Yeah, so they talk about those parts, talk about the theory of evolution by Darwin and Wallace, talk about convergent evolution, talk about the fact that these are not close related, they're, but they're quite different. So the fact that their convergent evolution has occurred just means that they have similar characteristics even if they're not related. And say why that happens to be able to have, because they live in similar environments, which means they to have to have similar kind of adaptations to be able to survive those environments. And then this is where the actual question comes from. Explain how Darwin, so explain, this is what we were asked as well. Explain how Darwin's wall is this theory of evolution by natural selection and isolation accounts for divergent evolution and convergent evolution. So in this case, we were only asked about convergent evolution. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.